Hey, what's up, beautiful Bellcast listeners? Um, just want to let you guys know that we are going to change the podcast name from Bellcast to just Bart and Geo, Um, because I just feel like it's the simplest way to transition everything and make everything kind of just merge together and become this beautiful marriage. So once you see this change happen, don't be alarmed. It's literally just a name change, just for simplicity's sake. Yeah, because everyone that doesn't know it, they're like, is it Bo? 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. Bo? We're gonna like... Maybe we'll just keep it barn geo. Yeah, we'll just keep it barn geo. Yeah. Um, so last week, or not last week, but we have been doing two uploads every week now where uh, every Friday we connect with you guys and we ask you guys for things that are either you need a second opinion on, things that are troubling you, things that you uh, just want to get off your chest or victories that you want to celebrate with us. And for the past couple of weeks, we have been connecting with you guys and giving you guys our two cents on you know personal matters that are going on with your life. But this week, I wanted to do something a little bit different where we wanted to connect with you guys and celebrate your victories. Because I know for myself, at least growing up, um, I had this perception that I just couldn't celebrate my victories or any accomplishments that I made. And I just felt like I... There was like I just didn't even know how to celebrate or what I should be celebrating. Like yeah, I, a lot thought, of a, a lot of families like the positive reinforcement side isn't really enforced. Mm -hmm. So you just mm -hmm. end up feeling like you have to do all these great things and that's what you're supposed it, right. to do. But then you never mm -hmm. end up feeling proud of yourself. So you have all these really high achieving people with low self esteem, which is so unhealthy. It's not good. So I think it's really important that we get to share these stories and celebrate them so that we all feel good. Like whether you lose five pounds or you lose a hundred pounds or if you get that big promotion or if you just got uh, you went from a B to a B plus on the test. Let's share these stories and let's all celebrate and, and enjoy each other. Yeah. So I still I'm or we're so committed to creating this community of positivity and just a safe space for everyone to learn and lean on each other that I do want to uh, continue to do this. And I appreciate everyone that submitted their, their, their victories. Cause I did put it on my Instagram this morning where I'm like, share it, but visit bartongeo.com and submit it there because I can't guarantee if you DM us that we're going to get to it. But at least if you message us on bartongeo.com, then there's a higher probability probability that we're going to get to that. So thank you for everyone that submitted. Um, I just want to jump right into it. Jump cool? then. Let's jump, baby. Okay, so everyone's going to remain anonymous again because I just feel like um, I don't want to put anyone. Uh, I don't want anyone to feel uncomfortable. But if they're famous, you have to say their name. <clears throat> no, I can't. Why? Because that's what we always say. It's going to remain anonymous. But what if Jay Balvin submits <laughs> something? <clears throat> then I'm going to fangirl and hopefully you guys can read it in my voice. Oh, okay. I'm gonna be like, oh, okay. Okay. So this person writes, well, near the end of eighth grade, I was super unhappy with my weight. I weighed 235 and knew that I really wanted to play volleyball in high school. Hey, my volleyball heads, what's up? Um, every day I worked hard and ran at least four miles a day. Wow. Damn. I've lost 42 pounds. Ooh, That's amazing. Good job. Yeah, and I'm still working hard. You guys are one of the main motivations, and seeing you guys happy always makes me happy. Aw, thank you so much. That's so dope. The this dedication, is, man. Yeah, well, this is incredible to me because um, when you're older, mm. people barely have the tools to achieve what they want. Right. Like right now, I still get people that are like 30 or 40 and just because they don't have the tools are like, hey, how do I lose weight? I want to lose like specifically just stomach fat. Like there's just so much misinformation out there. People think you could like have targeted <clears throat> fat loss, but you can't because you have to lose fat evenly at the same time. You have to drop your whole body fat percentage. Right. So people don't have the tools to achieve what they want to do. For you, who's at such a young age in eighth grade, you just took your life into your own hands. You're like. I don't even know if you have the tools. Maybe you're just like, fuck it. This is what I see other people do. If I do four miles a day, I bound to get some results. And yeah. bam, 40 pounds. That's fucking amazing. That's amazing. That really is. I can't imagine going from eighth to ninth grade and just even like, yeah, I, I don't I wouldn't even know how to do that. I couldn't even imagine setting a goal for myself and then going, this is what I'm going to do at like 13 yeah, or 14. That's so true. I remember I used to lock my, well, I all I had was my room. I sound so sad, but I mean, I'm fortunate enough that I even had my own room. But yeah, in my own room, I didn't know anything about exercise. It's just stuff that I would see and just areas of my body that I would want to target, right? Yeah. So in the shower or like, or in my room, I would just do crunches and I would probably do like 50 to 80 crunches like every day. Yeah, that's a and lot. I would just sit there and I would just do crunches because I'm like, I don't even know why I want to do crunches. I Maybe think you I wanted just, a tight stomach. 
But I didn't even know what a tight stomach meant. Like, I guess I, maybe a six pack. Maybe you wanted a six pack. Yeah. And then I would do uh, push ups. Maybe that's why <laughs> your core is so strong. Maybe. You've been doing it for so much. Yeah. <clears throat> I would do push ups. And then in the shower, I would do um, what are these? Um, Finger banks? Th- what the fuck? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> no. Uh, when I, like, oh my God. Air squats. No. Like, calf I'm, raises. Yes. Oh. I would do calf raises. Yeah. Yeah, I would do that. That's dope. Because I'm like, I want better legs. They're so random. I'm so random yeah. that I would do that like every night. And I think as a little ass kid too, like you have so much energy. Yeah. And I think I was a horny little kid that I'm like, I need to burn off some energy. So I would always just do crunches or I would do like the side twist crunches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I would do that. Wow. Um, my mom had a stationary bike. It was old as fuck. But I remember around this guy's uh, or this person's age, I don't even know if they're a guy or a girl, they didn't even say it. But around this person's age, I mean, yeah, age, I um, I was also uh, trying out for volleyball. And I, I, I'm i like, okay, well, I need to get my cardio up. I didn't know what cardio meant was, yeah. but I was just like, I don't want to be winded anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I would just you do the bike. You don't want to breathe heavy. Yeah. So I would do the the bike. And this happened before our hell week. So oh. when it, once hell week came in, I was good. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. I wasn't dying. I mean, we would do like hill sprints and I was dying there for sure, but at least my cardio was pretty good. Yeah, like when I was, uh, I think I was, I've always been pretty physically active, like some sort of sport or physical activity. And I would just do them for the sake of doing them. But I never had a goal, you know, like I never was like, <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna do 100 pushups every day. It was just, I just did them in Kung Fu or did them in a random sport or whatever. And so it's really cool for me to see like someone as young as her go, okay, I have uh, or him. this we don't or, know. or him uh, to see this goal and go, Bam, that's what I want to do. And what's cool about that is the thing that I learned from fitness is setting goals and then smaller goals that support the bigger goal and then working hard every single day to reach, reach that big goal. That's something that I was able to take out of fitness and apply it to my life. Yeah. So whatever other parts that this person was lacking confidence in, I can see them taking that four mile mentality. What else can I achieve if I put my four miles into cooking or four miles into my grades or four miles into being a better brother or sister yeah i don't know if this works this way for you but at least for me when i look good and i feel like i look good then the rest of my life everything else just kind of falls into place like if my clothes fits me the way i want it to like if like yeah if i feel i look good then my whole day is like solid i have a little bit of that but it's actually more if i function good what's a what's a function so like if i can do good what do you mean? So like, let's say, um, like, let's say my leanest, right? At my leanest, uh, I probably look good in pictures and all that. But then my bench is like subpar. Oh, so you didn't like that. I don't feel like, I don't feel alpha, oh. you know? But like right now, since I've been like, I'm in, I'm right about to do the marathon and I've just done all this marathon training for like three months. Like the, the fact that I know that I can chase someone down and beat the living shit out of them after I run like 15 miles. Oh my God. Like, like I know I'm not as lean as I uh, at my leanest point but i feel good like i feel like a superhero right now oh i think for me i just cared what i looked like <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah because i like yeah i don't think i ever cared about like am i strong or do i like maybe that's a guy thing yeah like i don't know for me well i don't or know a lot, person thing I, yeah, I think it's a person thing because there's, there's a lot of guys that go oh, yeah you know i look good i just want to look good in a suit that's or whatever true. for me like um even when i was freaking fat and i was 230 but I was so strong, I actually felt good too. So, so I was actually blinded to how I looked because I felt like a monster. I'm like, dude, someone tossed me a soda so I could just pop it in my hands. So you didn't, you weren't like, man, I look like a slob. No, because I knew what I could do. It was like that all primered muscle car, you know, and it didn't really look too good. You have like mismatch, um, like side mirrors, but I know I had a thousand horsepower in here. So, that, so that's me. I, yeah, I can't see it that way. Yeah. For me, I'd rather have the outside looking pristine, but the inside's all fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> and it yeah. probably doesn't run, but everyone's going, da- or no, it should run. Yeah. But it doesn't have to be the fastest. It doesn't have to be the fastest, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but if it is the fastest, then my head gets even bigger, but. Mine's like the sleeper. You know, the oh. car pulls up, like, I'll smoke this fool. I'm like, try me. Oh, yeah, yeah. I see. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I don't like being the. I like being the sleeper, but I'm never the sleeper. Oh, <laughs> I like being the sleeper, but I'm not. But yeah, congrats to congrats. you. I fucking love that. That's so motivating. I hope uh, everyone else out there finds it motivating and you're clapping for this person. I think that's fucking awesome. Okay, moving on to the next one. I'm very proud of myself for recently getting out of a toxic and manipulative relationship. I'm also in uni. 
Yay! I'm currently studying bachelor's multi Bachelor of Multimedia Arts and looking forward to creating my own YouTube channel as well oh. as yeah, as well as share my knowledge about my art on that. I am also very much proud of my mental health achievements these past few months. It may seem very little, but I am finally proud of myself. I am also a month off of smoking cigarettes, wow. which I am very much proud of in all caps. Um, my achievements as of now are very little for I am still recovering from the lifestyle I had before, but still progress is progress. And I'm so proud of all of that. And I'm so fucking proud of you. Like that's the internal dialogue that I, that I, I, I talk about in previous episodes where like everything this person just said, those are huge ach achievements, but for them, they say like, I know this is very little, but I'm like, oh. I'm like, what are you talking about? This is huge. Yeah, this to me, this is the part of the movie when you watch like a, a rom com or whatever. This is the Romance part of the movie. Comedy. Yeah, this is the Romantic part of the movie comedy. where they drop the bad boyfriend, they quit smoking, found new purpose in what they're studying, and know this is when what, the montage is about to happen. Yeah, and you know what's like that. This whole part feels good, and so uh, I don't even know if people look at their life like a movie, but for me. That's the part I want to concentrate my life in. I, I would r much rather, like, movie has three acts. I want it to be in that f the first part of the second act or the end of the third act where it just feels good. Spider-Man is just swinging from the building to building, you know, and he, like, he knows who he is. In the beginning, he was like, oh, I'm this little nerd. And then he, he got the spider powers, but then he didn't know that great power means great responsibility. He loses his uncle, so he's down to the dumps. So it's, like, on opposite ends. Now he's buff, but he doesn't have responsibility. And at the end, he finds balance. That's what I like. I like that part. She's fucking just swinging from skyscraper How do you know they're he or she? Well, her boyfriend, right? Is that what she said? Got out of a manipulative relationship? Yeah. So you think it's a guy? Yeah. I mean, I think it's a girl. Wow. Did I guess it right or no? Um, or are you going to keep it anonymous? Well, there's no name. Oh, I don't know. It just feels like feels like a girl. Yeah, there's no name. Could be a guy. I'm tripping. I don't know. Interesting. I like it. Okay. I don't know. Or, well, actually, yeah, manipulate it. Oh, true. If you're with a Korean girl, for sure, manipulate oh, it for God. sure. Oh, yeah. God. Oh, God. Any smoke with smoking cigarettes? Probably the Korean girl. Mate. Chinese, probably Chinese guy with a Korean girl. Are you talking about, do you want to get some shit off your chest? Because it sounds like you've been through this. <sighs> I need a cigarette before me to talk about it. <sighs> Did you smoke before? Yeah, I did. For how long? Uh, just from 12 to 13. <clears throat> oh, okay. Yeah, okay. That was really young. No, but I think these achievements are fucking dope. Really, really good. Yeah, to get out of a manipulative and uh, toxic relationship, to even recognize that I think is huge. That's the hardest part because a lot of times, you know, people that are in a manipulative relationship, they are the ones in the worst situation because they know they have to get out, but they can't. They're the types that's like... If I know if they cheat on me one more time, I'm gonna leave, and they that happens, and they still don't leave, you know. Or if like, uh, it, and and they know that the other person is just bad for them. All their friends says so, but they just can't because they're just so sucked into it. So I think it's really good that this person, guy or girl, uh, Chinese guy, mustered up the the courage <laughs> to get out of it and quit smoking. Yeah, that alone is super hard. Hell so yeah! So to have like have them lined up back to back to back to back, they're on a high. That's that's why it's man, you're living that act three life. Yeah, Act Three. That's cute. Um, have you ever been in a toxic relationship? Um, and recognize that it was toxic, or were you just like, "Nah, we're not good for each other," and it just ends bad, but you didn't even know it was toxic? I don't think I've ever been in a toxic relationship. What's toxic to you? What does that mean? That's true. I don't even know. Maybe you got to define toxic, and I'll let you know. Uh, so for me. A toxic relationship is when you have to wait a little bit because we're going to introduce our first sponsor. <laughs> okay. <laughs> then I have been in many of those. Okay. So I'm so happy to introduce our sponsor, Warby Parker. I love, 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 love that this service exists. I've actually heard about them uh, like three years ago. And I was taken aback at how innovative this company is. So for those of you guys that wear prescription glasses or uh, yeah, that have them, um, it's always been a nightmare, at least for me, to have to go into um, a, a store to only find out that all the frames, just the frames alone, are like hundreds and hundreds of dollars, and they're not even that cute. So what Borby Parker did to change the game completely is that you can go on their website, and now they've expanded so much that you can actually go into a store now, but uh, you can go onto their website, warbyparker.com, and you can select the, the frames that you like, the shape, the size, um, they even have guidelines to help you go. Oh, if you have this type of shape of face, you need to get these type of frames. Yeah, which is cool. Yeah, because a lot I didn't even know those rules, so I was probably looking freaking ugly for a long time. 
that's very true. I've seen your old pictures. You look pretty busted. Um, and yeah, so then you get to wide range of different types of frame selections. They have sunglasses and they're like the coolest, most hip styles I've seen. If you've admired my glasses, it's because it, they're Warby Parker. Um, so you pick the ones that you want, like you get to select up to five. They ship it to your house. You try it on. You can keep them for five days just so you can wear them and see how heavy they feel or how light or what, you know, like outfits that you want to coordinate. So you get to do that. Uh, the ones that you don't want, you ship back. They include a, a prepaid label so that you don't have to pay anything out of pocket. And then you go, hey, these are the ones I want to keep. And then if you like a week later, like uh the ones with your prescription are sent to your house. Bada bing, bada boom, you're done. Wow. But the best part, and this is a part that really got me, in addition to how stylish the glasses were, is the fact that they're not so damn expensive because you're not paying for like the label. Because mm. I've I've owned so many luxury brand glasses. Um, and they're no different than the quality of Warby Parker. Oh, I would even cool. argue that Warby Parker is better than some of these. Wow. Yeah. And I'm like, no one can even see what the label is and they look cooler. They do look cool. Yeah, they look way cooler. Yeah. So that alone, just the price tag alone had me going, yeah, there's no point in me buying these like luxury brands because like no one sees what they are unless it's like huge on the sides. But I don't give a shit. I would just want to make sure that I look cool and I can see. Yeah. Uh, so Warby Park is the way to go. If you can't tell, I'm a raving fan. Um, yeah, I'm a raving fan. So for everyone listening, again, like I was saying earlier, you get to try Warby Parker's free home try-on program. You order five pairs of glasses, again, to try at home. For free, you get to keep them for five days. Uh, there's no obligation to buy. They ship free and includes a prepaid return shipping label. So again, to try five pairs of glasses at home for free at warbyparker.com slash bear. So that's go to warbyparker.com slash bear. Uh, Bail B E A W to try on five pairs of glasses at home for free. Okay, and we're back. Um, so for me, a toxic relationship is one where one person, or maybe even both, they're not allowing growth to happen. So, like, let's say I'm trying to go to university, and then my boyfriend is like, "For what? That's a waste of time." So they're they're keeping me from my goals, or vice versa. I think that's pretty toxic. I think if there's like a lot of controlling, like, oh, you're going to wear that or where are you at? What are you going? Like, where are you going? Who are you going to have with? Okay, you can't go out like that controlling type, I think is very toxic. Um, how you talk to each other, I think is very toxic. Like if you're always putting the other person down and not supporting them, I think that's very toxic. Um, would, would you say that a part of our relationship was toxic? Hell yeah. I think our part, a part of our relationship was toxic. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think a part of our, it was. Um, I don't think... Uh, I've been in a relationship long enough or deep enough to be toxic to each other because my longest relationship was four months. So, you know, you're kind of still like, I think even like the first year or two, you're kind of like in this honeymoon phase. So none of the real deep issues really come out. Like you talk about it. Oh, where do you want to go to school? What kind of job you want? But it's not real. It's not that real shit, you know? Um, so I don't think that came out, but for sure I was toxic in the relationship. What do you mean? So I wasn't toxic to the other person because we didn't get deep enough where we had that much leverage on each other. But um, I remember my junior year girlfriend, uh, she was on the debate team, cheerleader, played volleyball, was doing really good. And I was just like this rave monkey, you know? Like I was just constantly raving, doing drugs, selling drugs, waking up in random people's homes. And then so she started ditching school to go with me so we can go raving in like Arizona. Mm. San Bernardino, like just living the crazy life. And I think it pulled her away from what she was on track to do. And so I think like when I ended up going to a military school and when she had we had that little break, I think she realized, oh, shit, like my life has been derailed a little bit. And so she broke up with me and then uh, that crushed me. But I also understood where it came from. Yeah. 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 yeah you were definitely toxic. I think I've only had maybe a one. <clears throat> relationship where it ended in a very toxic way where it got to the point where we were just talking so much shit to each other uh towards the end of it because i was just over it so i was just completely disrespectful to the person and i think they were just reacting to me so that's the that's a toxic relationship that i've been in but i think just to even know that you're in a toxic relationship i think that's so mature 
I don't know. Like now I can recognize it if I'm in one because I've just had so much experience. But to be entering a university, you're in your 20s. You know, I don't know if I was that educated or that wise. I think it also depends on how you grew up, too. Very true. Because if you grew up in a toxic environment like I did, then toxicity is the norm. Yeah. Right. And it's inevitable, it seems like. Yeah. But like if you grew up in a very loving home mm. and you know what like emotional health, emotional balance is, then as soon as something's weird, you're like, you are not going to talk to me like that. I will not take that from you. <laughs> is that what you sound like? Yeah. And then like, and then because the first time I heard that, I was like, what the fuck? That's weird. But then I'm like, oh, wait, it's because this person has standards. They know how to. Oh, someone told you that and you didn't understand? No, no, no. I would just like over here. Like, oh. and like, and like, to me, it was like, that's the white world, you know? But then Crazy I, but I, start, you. But I started to understand. Oh, wait, it's because they're able to express themselves in a healthy way. So for them, that's them having a boundary and letting them know that's not OK. If you want to be friends with me, these are the terms we're going to be friends at. Yeah. And so now that I understand that, I'm like, oh, shit, a lot of my relationships probably were very toxic. Yeah. Because that's just where you're used to. Right. That's you know? that's the emotional home that you're used to being in. Yeah. No, mine was like cool. I didn't know a lot about my parents, but I never saw them like fighting and they were together. And then when I would see them, like my parents were affectionate toward each other. Like they were kind of sexual affectionate. Like I'm so now looking back, I'm like, that's pretty tight. But they, they had a been, sexy health. They had a healthy sex life. But they might have been toxic towards you, though. Um, like were they pos was positive reinforcement a big a good thing or like a big thing? The, uh, the relationship wasn't really discussed. I just would hear my mom's frustrations. I'm talking about them to you. My parents like, to me. You and your mom's relationship was it toxic? You and your dad's relationship was it toxic? You and your parents' relationship was that toxic? I guess so. Yeah, because I didn't talk to my dad for several years. Oh yeah. So yeah, I think that I, I guess that's considered toxic. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. So and you then, came into this relationship toxic. I came into this relationship toxic. So, of <clears> course, <throat> we're going to have a toxic early on relationship. Yeah. I'm After the honeymoon phase, you know, like the first, I think, year or two, we're like, oh, soulmates. And then nothing like and then we're doing like the JK stuff. And then it was like no real shit came out. Right. And then after year two, year three, it got we're like, we're like, God damn, we're fucking we're 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 I don't want to say broken people, but we, we got issues. We are broken. We're not broken. Because, um, I don't know, I don't think we're broken. I just think we're just people that we just got to clean some shit up. Most people are broken, I feel like. I don't know. I don't like that term broken. I feel like it's a very, like, it's a very extreme way to describe people when we all have problems. So I don't think anyone's broken because, like, you can be fixed. Refurbished? <laughs> okay, yeah. we're Everyone's refurbished a little bit. Refurbish <laughs> refurbishable. Yeah. Okay. Uh, YouTube channel. Congratulations on that. I think these are great accomplishments. Don't downplay them. Don't try to be humble. Like, it's cool that you want to be humble, but like, be proud of it and be like, hey, this is what I'm doing. You don't have to be just because you're recognizing and celebrating your achievements doesn't make you an arrogant person. You're only an arrogant person when you think you're better than other people. Yeah. But if you're like, I'm so proud of myself. I did this. Hell yeah. I'm celebrating Good people around you are going to be like, hell yeah, you should celebrate. You should never apologize uh, for something that you're proud of. I've actually been liking seeing <clears throat> people like celebrate their own. Um, you you are. Their, their wins. Like I've seen people like like on Instagram <laughs> either like saying, hey, I lost 10 pounds or I did this or whatever. And then I'm like, oh, it's so cool. It's, yeah. It's so cool because like even maybe five years ago, if anyone celebrated on Instagram, people would be like, oh, show off. You know, and it's like that's not what they're trying to do. They're not trying to rub it in people's faces and go. Hey, because I lost five pounds, I'm better than you. They're just like, hey, look, I did it. Everyone yeah. can do it too. Yeah, it's their own insecurity rubbing off. Yeah. And that it, it's their own ego that doesn't allow them to see that. It's not about you, motherfucker. It's about them. Yeah. And you either are happy or you're salty. And if you're salty, you got to ask yourself, why the fuck am I salty? Yeah. Yeah. So don't downplay it. Congratulations. Woohoo. Okay, next one. Whoa. Oh, my God. They keep coming in. So I keep losing my place okay this one's short and sweet ready yep i'm learning to set boundaries for myself and it's fucking insane and scary but amazing at the same time that is awesome that is awesome i wish i knew more i yeah. want to hear more yeah, i don't know what they're saying i don't know if they're saying they're setting their own boundaries with themselves i think so or they're setting boundaries with other people i think so it's still gonna ref it's still gonna come back to them 
even if I set a boundary with you, with other people, it's still going to affect yeah, me. Yeah, but one is way harder than the other. So I don't know how much to congratulate them. <laughs> Shut up. I'm serious. What? What? Okay, explain your thought process. So setting boundaries with other people, I think it's way easier. Hey, if you don't pay me back, I'm not going to borrow any money from you. I don't think that's you. easy. That's easy for you. That's not easy for a lot of people. It's hard for a lot of people to, to set boundaries on other people because they don't want to be perceived a certain way. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, I'm going to set a boundary. You can't make fun hey, of me like hey, that. Hey, hey. What are you talking I can't about? Ma- I'm not going to take this abuse. <gasps> Careful what you say. I'm not going to take that. Kid, are you setting boundaries? Yes, I told you I'm setting um, boundaries. No, I, we know a lot of people that it's hard for them to say no because they're like people pleasers. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with being a people person. Uh, but until- with those people, you know what's even harder? What? Setting their own boundaries. That's even harder. To me, no matter what, because if you're already <clears throat> a pushover, the most person, the person that you'd even get pushed over even more by is yourself. Those people I have yet. But to- these are highly success. Or these are success, not highly, but they're. This sounds weird, but they are not. <clears throat> but these people are still successful and they're doing things. But they're still the same people that I hear complaining about not achieving what they want. Oh, I don't so know. Whether, whether I don't it's, know fit, what whether it's fitness, about. whether it's money, whether whether it's whatever, like people, I think it's really easy to go. I'm going to have a diet. And then they go, fuck, those Doritos look really bomb. Then they, well, they, just, they just broke the boundary they set. Listen, Asian dad, I don't know what your point in this is, but the point of this yeah. is to celebrate that they're recognizing that they haven't set any boundaries. I, th- that's why I'm trying to be a white dad and go, which one did you set? Because that's not I'm, a white dad. I, I don't know how to cheer nope. for you. Nope. A white dad would not say that. A white yeah. dad would be like, wow, that's amazing. And you don't ask the questions. Oh. You don't get cerebral and you don't get. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. That's a that's an L for you right now. I know. You don't you don't get. uh you don't want to start dissecting the intellect. You know what I mean? You yeah. want to attack the emotion and be like, or not even attack, but you want to hug and 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 nourish the emotion and be like, dude, that is awesome. How do you feel about sending boundaries? You feel empowered? Amazing. Yeah. That's so good. And then we can get, we can start attacking. Oh, fucked up. It's okay. I mean, hey, that's what this community is about, right? We're not supposed to judge each other. We're supposed to feel safe. And you're learning. Yeah. You're learning. So if Taika ever comes to you and goes, Dad, I'm so happy that I'm setting boundaries for myself. I I, I hope now from this situation, you've learned <clears throat> not to be like, well, what kind of boundaries well, are you? Either with yourself or with other people? He just said himself. To, huh? He just said himself. He just said himself. He I learned how to set okay. boundaries for myself. I just set boundaries and I'm so proud of that. Now you know to not be like, well, are they for yourself or for the people? Because I got to know how much to congratulate you because doing it for yourself, it's harder than for other people. Because then he's going to be like, I'm not going to talk to my dad anymore. He's fucking weird. <laughs> <laughs> it's true (laughs) yeah so i think it's a beautiful thing i don't even think um i was uh sassy enough i think growing up that i had to learn how to create boundaries and really quick uh really quickly because i just had my siblings you know so i already knew what i wanted and didn't want so when it came to picking a partner there were very specific things that i was looking for and, it, and, and I knew why I was in relationships. I'm like, is this like a long-term thing or is this for fun? And for the longest, I knew all of my relationships were for fun because I just didn't want to get married. So I'm like, well, this person's good to his family. He's good to me. Um, has a good head on his shoulders. Seems like he has a pretty decent, you know, future for the next five years at the very least. I'm in their life. I know I'm fucking cool. I'm going to push him to be great. So we're solid. Am I for fun or are you for like long-term? Oh, you're definitely for fun. Really? Yeah, you're definitely for fun. Fine. So I didn't even realize that I was setting boundaries. I didn't even know that they were called boundaries. I was just like, this is a fuck yes or this is a fuck no. And once like um, I was, I felt like I wasn't being treated the way I had imagined or wanted to be treated. Then I like, if I wasn't getting that, then I'm like, I'm out of here. Fuck you. Yeah. I know, I know my worth. So I think that's what it really comes How down to. How much are you worth? A m- lot. How much money? Tell me. Uh, it's you. We need a genie. A you need genie? a genie in a bottle. Yeah. So that. They can give you all the fortune of the entire universe so that you can buy me. What's the price tag though? It's not, there's none. You need a genie because you're not going to be able to afford it. I need the price tag so I can ask the genie for that amount. Uh, just tell him for all the riches in the world and a million more. Okay. Yeah. Um, not a billion more. Huh? No. Okay. Okay. Moving on because you're being a butthead. <laughs> Okay, dude, I am so happy with this. Like hearing your guys' victories and the headspace that you're in makes me, it's really hyping me up. 
I feel really excited. That's awesome. And I like that you come in with your Asian dad ways and I'm like, whoa, 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 buddy. I'm not trying None to. None of that here. I, I know I'm you're not. To, and I'm, I love I'm it because to, you're I'm learning. I'm trying to be a good white dad too. Yeah, and I love it because you're learning because yeah. I'm just like, whoa, 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 buddy. That's why I like this because we're all we're actually all learning and exploring together. Yeah. And no, I really mean that. We're doing great. I love it. Yeah. Okay, so here we go. Another one. Um, my biggest victory is getting accepted into my des- dental assistant program Ooh. at school. Yay. Which school is it? So I know how much to congratulate. <laughs> <Shut> <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> because out of all the people who applied in my college, 200 people, look at how proud they are that they're still like, uh, I'm proud, but I'm going to show you how much of a competition this was so yeah. 200 people they only accepted 25 people wow. and they're one of them Woo. you know what i'm saying that's freaking proud and i was so 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 wait wait whoa whoa this took a turn uh they only accepted 25 people and i was so so discouraged that i wasn't going to get in but i did and Good that for you yeah and that is something i'm so proud of myself Damn, 25 and when i about 100 that's almost that's like almost 10 percent Okay. It's like twelve percent, maybe. Yeah, uh, so proud of myself. Oh. And when I told my family, they didn't really bat an eye, and it didn't make me feel like I was that important. They're Aww. Asian for sure. It sounds like it. Yeah, <laughs> it Mother, sounds like it. <laughs> They're a minority for sure. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I had a, I had small odds to get in, and I actually did it. So I'm proud of myself for it. And I'm fucking. We are fucking proud of you. Good you for should, you. Definitely be proud and don't let your family's, um, what is it, reaction discourage you because I'm sure they want the best for you. I'm sure they're the ones that like were really egging you on to like go to this school, like get a degree. Maybe they didn't specifically say this specific school or this specific degree, but I'm sure they want the best of you. Just understand that that's just how they were raised and like kind of with your scenario, like you weren't shown a lot of uh, affection in, I guess, the Western way. You know, your affection came from a lot of security. Like your parents work their asses off so that they can give you a lump sum for school and it's all paid off for and you don't have to work for it. So the way that they show you love is is very different than, than you know, Western. Um, so don't let that discourage you. But I'm so happy that um, you're still able to see it as this huge victory because it really is. That's a fucking competitive ass, like program yeah there's that's like a over 80 percent rejection rate yeah i believe it's like a 88.5 percent rejection wow rate. that's very sexy Papa. Is it? yeah i love when you do fast math oh. mm-hmm. fast math <laughs> yeah quick, quick math yeah you grew up like that you said yeah because like so um i can totally understand why the parents aren't even that happy why because uh that's so like if you're in a super asian household it's the occupation or major obviously matters, but also the school matters, right? So, so you weren't kidding when you were like, "What's cool?" <laughs> no, 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 no. So I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be a good, a good, positive dad, so I don't, I'm not like that. But like, like let's say I told my parents, and then like let's say um, I got into the pre med program, and they're like, "Oh, good job!" And they're like, "What's uh?" Or they'll, they'll, they'll actually hold their emotions. Oh. They'll be like, "Okay, uh, which school?" And I'm like, "Cal State Fullerton." They'll be like, "Oh." You know, yeah. Or even on the flip side, hey mom, I got into Harvard. They'll be like, what, what major? Po- what, yeah, what major? <laughs> and I'm like, sociology. They'll be like, so disgrace. Damn, <laughs> you know? that's so, wild. So those things they have to get paired up. It's like that's how tough it is to get their approval. So maybe you got into a mediocre school. I'm so sorry. Shut the hell <laughs> just up. Just kidding. No, we no, are no. so proud of I'm you. I'm so proud of you. And you should be de- you yeah. should definitely be proud. If you haven't taken yourself out to dinner or like a spa day or like a, a day to just grab some drinks, like please do that for yourself. Even if you have to like keep it in your head and you know it's for you, yeah. do it. That's the very least that you can do for yourself. But please celebrate. I'm so happy you um you shared this with us. We're so proud of you. You kicked ass. Yeah. That's fucking awesome. Okay. It says, hey, Bart and Gio, love you guys. Been watching for many years. Thank you so much. Just want to say, Bart, this is for you. Um, you Pow. Yeah, you've really inspired me these past couple of months. Oh, really? Yeah, watching you train for your marathon and seeing you actually accomplish running 20 miles really just inspired me to get off my lazy ass and make something of myself. Aww. So I'm really proud I got me a decent job uh job saving up for school and Sick. yeah and making gaming youtube videos Ooh. yeah i've i've been going pretty strong trying to keep my momentum 
Anywho, thank you both for always being the dopest family on YouTube. Oh, I appreciate awesome. your existence and we appreciate your existence. Yeah, that's... get that shit, motherfucker. Yeah. Get that YouTube motherfucking gaming hey, money. You know what I'm saying? Make it rain, Hell make yeah, it rain. Get that fucking shit. <laughs> get off your fucking ass, motherfucker. <laughs> Hell yeah, that's tight. <laughs> that is tight. Congratulations on the job, the savings, which is really, really, really important. I think that's so important just to have a little safety net. Yeah, I also think it's like, fuck, it has to take me to run 20 something miles for, to fucking get your lazy ass. You're fucking lazy <laughs> as fuck, dude. What happened? All, all the, I posted all the other runs. I was like nine miles. It's like, mm, I got to wait for Bart to run like another 10 more. Yeah. And I ran like another 13 miles. That's a half marathon. Mm, He's like, nah, nah, that's, nah my butt's that's glued. basic. Yeah. That's basic. But hey, 20 miles, you helped somebody out. That's Tw amazing. 21. 21. Okay. 21 miles. You got it wrong, dude. It was tough. It was really tough. Honestly, it's like really, it's, it's, it's a really, um, it was hard training. Um, I think the over the last couple of months, I ran probably 200 miles combined. And it was something that um, I had to prove to myself, you know, like uh, I've always had the same story, the same inner dialogue in my head. I have asthma, cardio. I'm not good at cardio. And that's what I always You're limiting told. beliefs. Yeah, and I always told myself that. And uh, this is the most cardiovascularly trained I've ever been in my life. I still don't have good cardio, but... Being able to achieve something, um, not necessarily get first place, but be able to achieve something that I thought was pretty much impossible uh, gave me a lot of confidence. And I'm very proud of myself for it. So um, I'm fucking what happened there. So I'm I'm happy that like uh, me kind of trying to change my story was able to help other people change their stories too which is fucking awesome that's beautiful i'm fucking proud of you i Thank think you. you're awesome really like i always brag about you i don't yes i do what are you talking about i call you so i call yourself i call you a genius i'm like bart is so fucking smart and he thinks so damn fast and he's so funny um is your is your dick getting hard a little bit. Okay. I'm like, and he's so funny. I'm like, dude, you know, this guy was flat footed and he got into the Marines and he became a, a sergeant, right? Yeah. Uh, and then I'm like, you know, he has asthma. He's such a good swimmer. Now he's doing the marathon. Like you just have so many cool accolades that I can like brag about. Like I become an Asian mom and just brag about you. Who do you, who do you brag all these things to? I don't know. Whoever's willing to listen and I'll roll their <laughs> eyes like, ugh, this story again. Shut oh, up, that's bitch. Cutie. Yeah. That's I think you're cute. a badass. Oh, thank you. That's pretty cute. Yeah. Okay. This one's really dope. And this one, like, even though I'm not the first, but. Your like, heart, your heart's down here. Oh, I just want to grab my chi-chi. We can grab it down here. There you go. <laughs> oh, fine. Uh, it says, <laughs> I'm the first one in my family to be graduating from a four-year university Just exclamation. For you. That's, that's not easy, You bro. don't even know how fucking hard that is because. When, when your family, like I've, I've, so I lived in the San Gabriel Valley, right? And in San Gabriel Valley, it was like 50% Asian, 50% Mexican. And there's a, a lot of lower education people. So from that type of perspective, the minute you graduate, they want everyone to get a job. So, so that you can contribute to the household. Yeah. So when people are trying to go off and uh, go to college, a lot of people are like, stop being a fucking sissy and go get a real job where you fucking put blood, sweat and tears out. You know, like they think blue collared work is uh, a real work, a mechanic or doing like a, a laborer or something like that's that's real work. I don't want you to some fucking foo foo sit at the desk because they think that's fake work. So for you to be able to break that cycle and go, this is what I want to do. I want to go to college like that's so admirable because it's it's really, really difficult when you don't have the support system. Yeah, that also with just the knowledge, right? Like like you were fortunate enough to have your mom who's pretty familiar with the school system out here. And really what, good with And it. what the ranks are. And she has friends that have kids that have gone through the system. So there's already like this blueprint for you to follow. For me, at yeah. least, yes, I had siblings. My brother dropped out of college because for him, he tried it. He's like, nah, not for me. He, he became... Um, an electrician, which is what he loves, and he has his own business now. But uh, for my sister, she did that route, but we weren't that close. So I didn't really get a lot of the knowledge. Like, I didn't know anything going into school. Like, I didn't know what were good schools, what were bad schools, how I can even see that. Like, you also have to keep in mind, like, uh, when I started going or at least applying for school, the, the Internet wasn't really a popping thing. Like, like 
we had to ask Jeeves, you know? And yeah. like when you would search something, there was probably only like 40 websites that would pop up because it just wasn't popping off the way it is now. So I didn't really have the tools to understand what college was really going to give to me other than a degree. I didn't understand that it was going to give me some sort of skill set or like life lessons. Like I had no idea. So like going into it um, with no prior knowledge and you having to find it for yourself, it's like that's something you really had to work hard for. So I like that's why I think it's so admirable. Yeah. That's almost like a family of non-swimmers and then you're you go to the Olympics. Yeah, you're able to go to Olympics. That's fucking dope. Yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. Or they don't even know that like I mean they probably know swimming exists, but they're just like, well, swimming's just for like rich people. Yeah. Don't waste your time. Yeah. yeah. That's fucking awesome. There's more to the story. Um also I recently moved out with my boyfriend. That's fucking cool cuz that means you have to get your finances straight. So good for you. And I'm taking 24 units right now. What do you, how do you do that? Wow. Isn't that more than full time? Yes. I don't remember what full time is, but isn't it's kind it like of be 12? Like, yeah. It's like 12 or 15 or yeah. something. Probably 12. Yeah. Damn. Double. She's double timing. What the heck? A heck? A how You're does, a double timing bitch. How does that even happen? <laughs> I don't know. She works hard. In a hard. good way. In a She's good way. killing it. Uh, good for you. And I graduated in May. God damn, girl. That's wow. awesome. That is fucking, yeah. I'm fucking proud of you, dude. That is fucking awesome. Now hurry up and go get a job so your fucking parents don't go, where the fuck is this sissy going? No, I'm stop just it. Kidding. Um, also got a puppy that looks like meatloaf and fawn. Oh, How cute, right? Okay. Please invest oh, in a fucking vacuum because German shepherds, if I'm assuming you have a German shepherd, they shed like a mofo. So I miss meatloaf. get ready. Oh, I'm sorry. We gotta pick them up still. That's true. We got him cremated. Fucking powdery ass meatloaf. And we have his we have <laughs> his ashes that we have to pick up from the vet. Can yeah. we remember to do that? It's on your list. Yeah. God damn it. He's a big fluffy. He has this list that he keeps adding more things to. And I don't know when he's going to get around to it. Hey, I'm not going to get to it. But just like Arya, better believe I'm repeating my list. Cersei, the mountain, the hound, Joffrey, meatloaf. It's on my list. Okay. Well, we'll see when you get around to it. Okay, let's see. This one wants advice, but we're, that's not what we're talking about. Okay, ready? Okay. Do, 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 do. Okay, I graduate with my associates this semester, which I'm happy that I am. But my mom is focusing on me finally getting my bachelor's, which makes me feel more pressured to finish school fast. Okay, wait a minute. This is not a... Okay, so we're only going to focus on one of them, okay? And we got to focus on the celebration. So I understand that you're under pressure and um, that's just that's just going to have to happen. I'm sorry that you're feeling that, but we need to focus. We need to stop. We need to like smell the roses. You know what I mean? We need to smell the roses and we need to focus on that we're getting our associate's degree. Well, it seems like the mom's cutting the roses off. He's trying to smell them. Or yeah. she's trying to smell them. Yeah, they're trying to smell it, but the mom's doing And that's okay. Just understand. Just tell yourself, oh, my mom's fucking impatient as fuck. She wants the best for me. She wants me to be stable and have a secure future. I get it. But it's okay to just like, so understand that. It makes me feel good when I go, my mom's a bitch. <laughs> no, because your mom's not a bitch. I know. Just you kidding. know what I mean? It's just not happening in your timeline the way you would want it to. But we have to understand that everyone's an individual. Everyone's going to react differently to things. Everyone has a different goal in their mind. Your mom's goal for you is to be stable. Try to get some to take care bachelors. Of you go get a bachelor's then. Shit. <laughs> right, if I, it's got that my, easy. I got my associates. Let me celebrate. Yeah. So if you can, if you can view it that way and understand your mom in that way, maybe you'll feel less pressured. Yeah. Uh, and you'll be like, okay, I know she means well. This is where it's coming from. And just like I was telling the other person, like take yourself out. Call up your girlfriends or guy friends and just have a fun little night out. Again, just even if it's in your own head that you're celebrating because you got your associates, make sure that you focus on it and go, hell yeah, I did this shit and I'm so proud of myself. Look at yourself in the mirror. Point at yourself, give the mirror a kiss because you're kissing yourself. Be like, I love you. You did this shit. Let's yeah. go. Let's go tackle some more hurdles. Yeah. And the more and the happier you are about the associates, think about how much happier you're going to be when you get your bachelor's. you yeah. be so happy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. A lot of people are submitting their problems, which is okay. But it's not okay. You got to pay a fucking attention. Okay. <laughs> okay. Ready? Yep. Okay. I just re uh, I just recently, five months ago, graduated in Bachelor of Forensic Science. Wow. Yes, that sounds exciting. What school, Ooh. though? Huh? 
What school did they go to though? <laughs> Shut up. I'm just right now, I'm in the process of looking for a job in my degree field, which I'm really struggling to get. I don't have work experience, so loads of companies are rejecting my application. I've lost okay momentum looking it's Problems, okay. problems, problems. Uh, you gotta pay attention to the post. We're trying to celebrate. How are we gonna celebrate if we're shitting on your own parade? I know. Don't shit on it. Be proud of yourself. Yes, okay. You don't have the experience. That's fine. It's okay for everyone out there that just graduates that you think you're gonna land a job. No one's going to hire you without experience. So if you're still in school and you haven't graduated yet, start shadowing people. Start applying to the jobs that you want to uh, eventually climb the ladder of or get a, a good paying salary from and start at the bottom because you don't have experience. So don't be surprised if you're not getting hired because you don't have experience. Yeah, that's why I'm actually a big fan of internships, especially if you're not paid because when you're not paid, you're doing everything and everything. And that's where you get the most experience. So in college... It actually helps you out a lot if you can intern or if you can get a part-time job uh, that's slightly in your field. So if you're a forensic specialist, I'm assuming you're applying to law enforcement. If you could be a police cadet or even just work the front desk at a police station, like I think those things would help out so much, you yeah. know. And then and uh, not and the one other thing is not only is the experience helpful. But the juice that you get from working at a place is so important. And by the juice, juice okay. the networking, you know what I mean? Like a lot of the times it's not it's not what you know, it's who you know, right? Yep. So if you are already, if you've been at the LAPD, I don't know, like main office for the past three years as you're going to USC, you're going to know of all the openings that are popping up, you know, who, who are the bosses of which department, every single manager and you, you could already line it up perfectly. Hey, I'm going to graduate in six months. Can you wait for me? So having this experience, like the, the part-time jobs, the internships, it's not only just for the experience, but it's also for getting that network. Like you need all these things in this day and age to land that good job. So put yourself in those positions. Yep. I couldn't agree more. But like I'm proud of you for getting your bachelor's and what you wanted to do. And that's the hard part. You know, a lot of people don't even finish that. Yep. Now. You just got to put yourself out there for a year or two, get that experience, build that juice, and bam, you'll be in it. Don't you worry. Hell yeah. There we go. Okay, so now we're back on track, okay? Ready? Yeah. We're moving back on track. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure how long this is supposed to be. Don't even trip. Uh, I'm 25 years old and recently invested in some property. 25? Wow. Damn, dog. I was broke as fuck at 25. Fuck yeah. I was negative in my account a lot at 25. I know. Um, I also started going to therapy this year. Fuck yes, that's going to help so much. That is awesome. I've also been working on myself, specifically self-healing, which is very difficult and tough at times, but I see growth. Gio, I gained a lot of inspiration from you. Aw, thank you so much. As you are a badass lady doing the work to always better yourself, uh, to better yourself. Um, wait, to better... Sorry, there's a typo. I'm so sorry. Already, already best self. And that has become one of my core values, constant improvement. Hell yeah. That's dope. Oh, this is so sweet. Bart, you crazy, but I know you're a down ass mofo and are always functioning on superhuman levels. Love you both. Oh, fuck so you, motherfucker. I don't get it. What happened? I Call lost Call me you. crazy. In a good way. I'm just kidding. I know. Yeah. I know you know. You're smart. What? Yeah, that's so damn cool. Matt, I'm so happy where... Um, the knowledge of mental health has gone because growing up for my, like when I was growing up, it was such a stigma. It was like, why do you need to see a therapist? Are you crazy? And I'm like, what did you, you saw a therapist, right? When you were younger. Yeah. I was forced to, I had a uh, anger management classes that to go to. Cause um, that was kind of like one of the, prereqs uh, or kind of, kind of like a prerequisite for me to stay at that school. Cause they were, they were already trying to expel me. And then, so I had to go and see this, um, anger management counselor lady to like talk out my feelings and stuff like that yeah i wish it was more like growing up i wish that um i had that there was less stigma on it because i i feel like i would have dealt with so many more things faster you know because like even within my family i see how we would deal with problems and stuff and i'm like damn like if we had more access to a therapist and it wasn't looked down on like you're fucking broken and there's things wrong with you that a professional needs to fix yeah um like I, I think we would have better relationships 
I would have had a better like better relationship, which would have be- meant you and I have better relationship. That's true. So I'm such a huge advocate for people just taking care of their their mind and their yeah, emotions. It's hard to have better relationships with other people if you don't have a good relationship with yourself. Yeah. So if you because then what ends up happening, if you already have bad relationships with yourself, you're full of insecurities and you're full of inadequacies. Mm-hmm. So when you meet other people, you don't even know that you're projecting. And then when you project people other people react they react to it and their insecurities come out comes out so it just becomes like it's like seeing two like insecure dogs at a dog park they just start fighting and they're not even really violent like when you separate them and then like a a, a dog behavior specialist is, is like diagnosing them they're like oh wait your dog's not really even violent but why do they bite each other on the neck you know and then when you have a calm zen dog they're just like there and they just kind of make everyone else happy and it's easier yeah. to have a relationship yeah that's something i learned uh for myself that like when you don't have a good relationship with yourself, it's hard. Like I was just fortunate to find like really good people. I think because I've like, I've had this thing with myself and this is where you and I bonded that I find things in people that I really admire. And I like, I want to learn how they do that because I want to make that skill mine. So I've always tried to surround myself with people I really look up to for the way they are as just people not necessarily like what they've accomplished in life and because i feel like skills like we can all really like i mean i can i can learn that you know but when it comes to like certain traits i'm like how do they go about doing that like how are they so good with other people or how are they so happy all the time or how are they so funny so like um or compassionate so i look at that and i'm always like trying to study but um yeah i just i don't i never really had like a really good relationship with myself so I was always trying to um, be with people that w- also like um, didn't have good relationships with themselves. So like it was just like um, um, they keep each other down in, in relationship in relationship, huh? So you can keep each other down. No, not to be. I wasn't in relationship like that, but it was more like we we really leaned on each other a lot. Oh. So then it became very like codependent. Yeah, and then I didn't like that. Yeah. Yeah. So it was like this weird place that I would put myself in. And then I always felt like I needed this person a lot. But because I hated that, I'm like, I'm fucking independent. Get away. So this this confusing thing. Yeah. Very confusing. Yeah. Yeah. So having a really good relationship with yourself really is going to dictate the type of life that you're going to have. The more love you have for yourself, the more love you can give to other people and the less love people can take away from you because they don't hold the power to that. Yeah. It's, it's all yours. Yeah. So that's fucking beautiful. And the fact that you're investing into property, damn, we invested into property when we were in our 30s. I don't even know if we invested into property because we live at this one. It's not. Oh, okay. so it's, that's an investment, though, baby. No, but usually investment is uh, well, no, it's because it's for residents. We're, we're purchasing property for residents. Usually, it's considered investment if it's oh. a non-primary residence. Okay, we haven't even invested yet, and we're yeah. almost forty. I know you fucking rich motherfucker. <laughs> no, they're just good at finance. I know. That's amazing. Be happy. Be proud of that. I'm so happy you shared that with us. Thank you so much. That's so inspiring. Makes me feel all bad now. No. Okay, ready? Yeah. <clears throat> hey, Barton Geo, I want to share something I've. I've been really proud of myself for. So last year I got into university and I've been juggling work at the same time. Hell yeah. Really hard to do. Oh my it God. It is, but that's dope though. <clears throat> I'm really proud of myself for juggling school and work and at the same time being able to pay off my bills. Woo! Yes. I think this is something common, but because this is the first time for me, I'm really proud of myself for sticking through All the ups and downs throughout 2019. Honestly, it hasn't been easy to save up because I don't earn that much. So it's all just enough to pay my bills. But I'm glad that even after breaking down a few times, I'm still here. Fucking beautiful mindset. I fucking love you. Uh, Just thought I'd share this with you too. I love you both and have been watching you guys for five years now. Awesome. And you guys always inspire me. Thank you. You are inspiring me. Sorry it took me kind of a bit to read it. The text is really, really small. Um, I should have made it bigger. No, that's fucking awesome. You know, like people don't understand the importance of setting goals and achieving them because it gives you so much momentum. Like if you don't have, even if you're just killing it without a goal, you actually don't know how much you've accomplished. So when I to put myself in your shoes, I think one of my most 
accomplished and most proud years I remember was my uh, last year at community college. So I got promoted to corporal at the time in the Marine Corps. I was I wanted to get a 4.0. I was getting closer and closer. I built something like 3.3, 3.5, 3.6. I wanted to get a 4.0 for a whole year. And um, and I also wanted to bench over 300 pounds. So like those are the three aspects of my life that really mattered. And I really worked at You're it. Such a fitness guru, bro. <laughs> so I worked really hard at those three to bench in a very funny way. <laughs> and so I, uh, when I got there, like that gave me so much. Even though it was hard, and like I, like there was times where my buddies, like Joe and my roommate, they went to Vegas, but I knew I had to study. Like I had to say no to a lot of things, you know, like the things that I really wanted to do. Pulled a lot, of, a lot of all nighters. Um, save money on a lot of things that I wanted to spend money on. And it was just lots of ups and downs. But being able to do it, when I look back, I'm like, fuck, yeah, it was all worth it because I knew the direction that I was going. You accomplished all of them? Yeah, I accomplished all of them. And all of those made it into my personal statement. And because I was so passionate about that, you, I bet you my personal statement, you can feel the passion in it, you know? So I think like for you to be able to do all the ups and downs and yeah, it's gonna, you're gonna cry, you're gonna, you're gonna be like, fuck, there's sometimes I don't feel like I can make it. But when you just keep pushing yourself that much more, you're gonna be like, wow. And you can take on more. I fucking did that. Yeah. yeah. It feels so good and it fuels the rest of your life. Hell yeah. Yeah. And I really love the fact that you're able to acknowledge that you had these ups and downs because a lot of people tend to have that ego of like, no, nah, I got this shit. It's OK. But like this person's like, I had downs, man. It's not easy. Or people think reaching a goal is a straight line. Yeah. It's never a, if you have if your goal is a straight line, the goal is way too easy. Yeah. 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 Life doesn't move in a straight line ever. Yeah. Like one of our good friends says, uh, nature doesn't create straight lines at all. That's all fake. It's all synthetic. Um, who's, you know, a, who's a good friend? I'm not gonna tell you. Oh. You know our good friend. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I absolutely love that you've you're celebrating this and you're like acknowledging that hey, I had my ups, I have my downs, but yeah, motherfucker, I'm still here. That's some thug shit. I love that yeah. to be like, mm. I'm sticking my middle finger up in the air and going like, yup, I just came up from a down. Yeah, started from the bottom. Now we here. It took yeah. you three tries to get the right song, but you got it finally. I wasn't even thinking of a song. I oh, think okay. you were thinking of the song first. Okay. That's fucking awesome. I'm so proud of you guys. Yeah. Damn, I wish I could keep reading these because I have like hundreds, you guys. I have hundreds of emails. Maybe we got to do another episode of celebrating. I love these this. Are awesome. I'm so amped. I'm so inspired. Like I don't need any coffee because I'm just so freaking inspired and motivated by you guys. And we were we were able to like learn from you. Like I just taught Bart a couple things about Asian parenting. I know. Like, I thought I was getting better but i guess i still got more work to do i mean you are getting better for sure you're getting better and we should celebrate that but we all have a lot of work to do how much work? i have a shit ton of you work i gotta fuck do. Ton to do so much work i gotta do it's almost impossible to do it all but i'm gonna do it watch oh you are yeah i'm gonna do it i'm wow. a chip away at it hell yeah i'm not dying tomorrow and i'm not dying in 10 years so right. i mean <laughs> i hope not yeah you might need way more than 10 years but i believe in you hey i'm gonna do it okay okay at least i'm gonna die with a smile going hey i did my best with the tools i had at the time hell yeah that's all I can say. That's beautiful. Um, thank you, baby. And thank you for everyone who submitted. I really want to continue doing these. Oh, my God. The emails still keep coming in. I love you guys so much. That's awesome. I want to continue to create this. Um, would you guys be interested in a Facebook community? Like like where, you know, because I feel like there's so much dead space from Monday to Friday where we can get to discuss this. But like, I feel like. We're all similar minded, right? Like we all bond here. Like you guys listening, uh, me and you, we, we're bonding because we have a similar mindset. We want to achieve great things. We believe in ourselves. We understand that we have, you know, not so positive areas in our life that constantly need improvement, but we're down to put up the fight and do it. And I feel like um, that's hard to find sometimes like out in the real world yeah. or, you know, or like yeah. we're so busy with like the grind, the day to day grind that we just don't have time to meet people. And we're so fortunate to be living in a time where the world became so much smaller thanks to the Internet. So creating a Facebook community, I feel like you guys can all chime in and support each other and meet like minded individuals. So if you're down to do that, let us know in the comments. 
Uh, let us know anything else that you guys want us to be talking about. I do want to continue doing these segments, celebrating you guys, learning from you guys, motivating you and you guys motivating us. Um, so yeah, if there's anything that comes up and you're like, oh, this would be a cool idea. Let us know. We're definitely reading your comments. Also, uh, don't forget to rate this podcast five stars if you really enjoy Ooh, it. Yes, yes please. More thank people you. can see it. And thank you to our sponsor, Warby Parker. So to try Warby Parker's free home try-on program, order five pair of glasses to try at home for free for five days. There's no obligation to buy. Ships free and includes a prepaid return shipping label. So Ooh. you get to try five pair of glasses at home for free at warbyparker.com slash bail. B-E-A-W. And also don't forget to check out barbellbrigade.com to get all your fitness needs from supplements to fitness apparel to the gym. We're all about having people go out there and dominate their humbling pursuit because that's where you finally learn what you have to dominate on the inside and that's where you gain the most insight on life. So make sure you go push yourself, borrowbrigade.com, and we got you covered.